Hello, Olsen here from getblended.org. In this video I'd like to introduce the idea of mixing or overlaying some simple images in cycles in order to create a node group that eventually lets us change the colour of the individual elements here. Um, and also the background of the thing, maybe making it transparent or something like that if we want to. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's head over to a fresh blender and get started. The first little job we've got here is just to organize our UI a little bit. So we've got the editors that we need. We don't need the timeline right now. So let's grab the echelons in the top right corner of it and pull them up and then down to squish the 3D view down into there. I know I'm going to need a node editor, so I'm going to drag one of those down from here and we'll change in the editor type selector on the left hand side, we'll change to the node editor. I also know I'm going to need a UV image editor, so let's drag that across and change this into the UV image editor. We're going to be using the cycles render engine, so up top in the info editor we can change that there. And I think we're going to de delete the default cube, so just press X and delete that guy, and shift A and we'll add in a plane. We're just going to be using a simple object for this, it's probably the um, a nice way to just demonstrate what we'll be talking about. So Cycles uses UV mapping for images and things by default. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'll just go U and unwrap. And over on the other desktop I've got a couple of images that we'll be working with. So let's drag what first one of these in here. You can see it's sort of, um, well, it's the, we're going to be working with white and black uh, values. Um, so I've got this other one as well, which is a sort of swirly pattern. So we're going to be kind of mixing uh, these together. I can tab out of... Um, tab out of edit mode there. Where did I get these from? I got these from openclipart.org. I searched for black and white pattern and I found a couple of few uh, different ones and what I did was I just took them into GIMP, uh, inverted the colors and made sure that the values were, um, were, were, were correct. So white was white and black was black basically. So we're going to add a new material to our plane and it starts off it's just a diffuse bsdf there you can see if i go shift z into textured mode you can find that on the header there the oh rendered rendered mode is uh, what i'm doing you can see that if we change the color of our diffuse um how that's changing there so how would we add a image to this well we go shift a and add in a texture and an image texture and because I've opened them already in the image editor they'll be available from this drop down so let's choose the border one first of all and what we can do is take the color of our image texture and plug it into the diffuse color here so you can see how that's working now the first thing to do perhaps would be if we wanted to give this a bit of a different color what would we do we have to be mixing in a different color, so we have a node for that. It's color and mix RGB. So let's give that a go. We'll plug it here. And I can see that we're going to have to play with our blend type a little bit. And one that's going to work particularly well for me in this case is going to be the color blend type. So I'm going to change that there. I take the factor up to 1. And now you should see if I change the color of the uh, little swatch here, how that's going to be affecting the color of our um, our image. Okay, so what would we do now if we wanted to mix this guy on top? Well, I'm going to add another image texture node, so I can just duplicate this one with Shift uh, Shift D. That's not a problem. And I can also duplicate this color node because we're going to be coloring that one as well anyway. Let's change the color to something contrasting. And again, take our color of our new image and put it here. And we're going to take the color and put it there. So obviously, what I haven't done is changed the uh, the image in here. So we're going to take the drop down and just choose the swirl. So now we've got the green pattern coming through here and the uh, the border pattern coming through there. 
So we're going to have to find a way to mix these guys together such that one is kind of on top, if you will, of the other. So another mix node might be in order. Let's go Shift A, add in our mix RGB. And I'm going to plug the one that I want sort of overlaid into the bottom input. So let's pull that noodle out of there and plug it there. And take this one and plug it here. Now, what we can see is that we've got this factor value. And what that means is that if we slide it all to one, uh, zero rather, if we slide it to zero, we only get the top input. If we slide it all the way to one, then we only get the bottom input, the lower input there. So what I need to do is find some value to plug here in order to uh, set this factor. And because of the colors that I've chosen in the image here, we've got values of one, that's white, and values of zero, that's black. So if I take the factor of here, of, of the swirly pattern, everywhere that, that, that there's white is going to get the bottom input, and everywhere there's black is going to receive the top input. So let's give that a go and see what happens. We'll take this here and plug it into the factor. And now you can see that the uh, swirly pattern is sort of overlaid over the, um, over the border by using that as a factor. You could do it the other way around if you swapped these inputs. You'd see it would go a little bit weird at the moment because it's uh, receiving the wrong factor. We take the factor here and plug it there. And you can see now that the border is sort of on top. So um, that's how that is sort of working. Let's control Z back to where we were. Now what I'd like to be able to do is have some control over the background color. So I suspect what we're going to be able to do is use another diffuse uh, shader here. So let's shift D and duplicate this guy. Let's change it to some color. And how are we going to mix these guys together? Well, I think we're going to use a mix shader this time. So let's have our mix shader here. Let's plug the ones that we want to be on top into the bottom input. And we'll plug the what's going to be the background into the top input here. And we can see now that we're going to have a little issue with our factors again, because if we slide that to uh, zero, we'll see that we're only getting this color of the, uh, the, the diffuse up there. And then one, we're just going to get what the result of our mixing here. So what are we going to use as a factor this time? Well, if I took the color of this guy over here and plugged it there, well, that sort of works. We get the background, but obviously we only get the swirl pattern. If I take this here and plug it there, what we're now getting is only the border, but because of the and but we're also getting the result of where our swirly pattern has been mixed in over the top of that. So neither of those are in fact going to do the job for us. Oops, that was a shift and um, uh, left mouse to add these little guys. You can remove them with shift uh, control X. And what I wanted to do was control and left click and drag to cut the noodle like that. So what if we, we could try and take even the factor out of the mix node and plug it there. Um, but that's not sort of working either because we've, uh, we've, we've, we've changed things around up there. So what are we going to do? Well, what if we could take both of these and add them together? We can do that. We can go Shift A and add in, say, a converter and a math. And the default mode is actually add. So now we can take the color of our border and the color of our swirl, adding them together. And if I just Shift D and duplicate this um, diffuse node and plug this directly into the output, we can see now if I plug the value into our color, we can get a preview of what that's going to look like. Now again, I talked about values, the value of 1 and the value of 0. Now obviously what happens is if you add 1 and 1, you get 2. So that's what's happening in these bits that are being overlaid. And 2 isn't a very nice number when we were dealing with colors. But fortunately, the math node has a clamp option here. And that will unify the values of our image so that 1 is the maximum value. So this is going to be ideal for the factor of our mixing 
the result of the, the mixing of the different images and the background. So let's replug this guy here. And now let's take this the result of the adding of those two images with the clamp option and plug it to the factor here. Great. So that appears to work just fine. We can change the color of our background. We've also maintained the fact that we can recolor our um, our images back there. Now there is one caveat to be using the the color blending mode here, which I'll show you. If I wanted to make this color be a black, what actually happens is when we change this to black, um, it goes white. And you'll see if I open up the color swatch, how the little dial is in the middle and Blender is treating this as a white color. You'll see if I change up the value how the, how it's how it's right in the middle of the white. So this is a little um, the, the basically what it means is the, the color blending mode type will never change the value of what we're getting out. At least that's the idea. That's my understanding of it. So if we wanted to change the value of this we'd do it beforehand. So we can go Shift A and add in a converter math again. We'll drop it here. And if we change the value, um, sorry, the, the the operation to multiply, we can then have control over the 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 value here. So if we were to multiply it by zero, obviously we get a black, and then we can multiply it by uh, one to get the original value back again. Uh, so that would be how to do that. If you wanted to make this be a transparent surface, we instead of the final dif uh, diffuse going in here, we could use a transparent shader instead. So let's just um, Alt D. Um, no, okay, I'm just going to go Control X and delete that guy and go Shift A and add in our shader and we're going to find transparent BSDF and we'll plug that here. And now it's not very obvious, but if I was to add in a famous uh, monkey, um, control 2 and smooth, and I'll just um, rotate it around a bit, G, Z. Uh, hopefully, what we'll see is that when we go Shift Z back into rendered view, how that is working, how we've got now the transparent on top. I'm just going to um, change this back up to some color so you can see how that's working now with the transparent shaders and this is working again because we've got the factors of 1 and 0. If you had uh, an image such as this which has all different values on it, if we take a look at our values you can hold control and left click and you should see the values appear roughly um, down there. Yeah, so you can see that this has got a value of 0.7. This one's got that's 0.7 again, same color. Uh, 0.6, uh, 0.1. So if you were to use, let's um, let's see what we do here. We we'll go Shift D and we'll just duplicate this image texture and we'll select this pattern color and we'll plug the shift D and duplicate this guy we'll plug the color into here I'm just setting up a sort of temporary uh, node structure here we'll take the color and plug it here and we'll be using this as a factor what you can see is those colors which have a factor of a, a value of less than one are obviously getting uh, obviously being partially at least transparent so it would be in this case what you want is an image with the alpha channel and instead of using the color directly as the factor you can use the alpha channel and you can see how that works nicely now uh, we can have the different value colors because it's the alpha channel and if you were to view the alpha channel directly so we plug this here and then that there what you'd see is it's very similar to our black and white texture because it the alpha channel is values between 0 and 1 that's basically um, all it is so let's delete those let's take the value again of our adding of the two and replug our diffuse BSDF and replug this 
Okay, so we're back to there. Uh, what it might be nice to do then is to create something that would make it easier to see where to change the colors of these and we could do that by way of a node group. I'm going to B box select and just drag all of those, find control G on my keyboard and what we see here is that we've got a group input node and we've got a group output node and the border, the, the background is green because at the moment we're in uh, edit mode on the node group so you can tab in and out of edit mode on our group node here and what I want to do is drag some values to the group input node that they be exposed on the outside of the node so let's say that we wanted control over our sort of border image we plug that here and the swirly pattern we can plug that there and I'm using a transparent background at the moment. I wasn't planning on doing that. So X, delete that, Shift D, duplicate, plug it there. And let's make that sort of black color. And I was going to um, have control of the background also on the outside of our group shader node. In the properties region appears this um, interface here with the with the namings so we can change these actually which is quite uh, useful so we can go call that the border call, you can control click on these as well and um, to change the name so we'll call that what the swirl uh, and this one's going to be the background you can change the order of these as well using the up and down buttons and then you'll see when we tab out of edit mode on this group shader node how these values are exposed on the outside and we can go ahead and make some changes here and it's nice and easy you know if somebody else was going to be using your uh, your node setup it would be clearer um, what does what in this case uh, so yeah well I think that's all for now I think hopefully if you've never used the nodes before like this, you found it easy enough to follow, at least learned a bit about how factors work uh, to have some fun and experiment. Uh, so once again, thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.